Hello everyone, our lesson today is 1.1c, squares and square roots, and goals today we have two of them. First is to quickly identify squares and cubes and their roots, and then also we want to be able to solve exponent equations. The first thing that we need to know in order to be able to do this is that when you square a number, you multiply the number by itself. So essentially you take a number, whatever number it might be, you multiply that number by itself, and that's called squaring that number. On the other hand, when you square root a number, you must ask what number must be multiplied by itself to equal the square root. So just like addition and subtraction are opposites, and multiplication and division are opposites, squaring a number and square rooting a number are also opposite operations. Now in order to be successful in this lesson, there's some memorization that we're going to have to do. First, we're going to have to memorize the first 15 perfect squares. So I have the first 15 integers written down here, and we have to memorize the square of each of these numbers. And we have to be able to recall those squares quickly in order to be successful with this lesson. So again, when we square a number, that means we multiply by itself. So if we take 1 times 1, obviously that equals 1. 2 times 2 is going to equal 4. 3 times 3 equals 9. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 times 5 is 25. So again, all I'm doing here is I'm taking the number that I had written down at the start of the slide and multiplying it by itself to get the number that I'm going to be writing in purple. So continuing to the middle column, 6 times 6 is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 squared, which is the same thing as 8 times 8, is going to be 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. So one more time, all I'm doing is taking the numbers that I've written in black, blue, and red and squaring them, so multiplying the number by itself. Now for the red column, when I multiply 11 by itself, when I square 11, I'm going to get 121. 12 squared is going to be, give me 144. 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is 196. And 15 squared is 225. So guys, again, in order to be successful with this lesson, I'm going to ask you to memorize those first 15 perfect squares. I would encourage you to make flashcards and put the integer, number 1 through 15, on one side, and then the square of that number on the other side. So if you have a specific flashcard, let's say for 7, you would have the number 7 on one side, and 49 would be on the other side of the flashcard. So along with memorizing the first 15 perfect squares, I also want you guys to memorize the first 15 perfect cubes. I'm sorry, the first 5 perfect cubes, not the first 15, just the first 5. Okay? So when we cube a number, that means we multiply the number by itself three times. So if we're going to cube the number 1, that means 1 times 1 times 1, which still equals 1. Next, for the number 2, when we cube the number 2, or 2 to the third power, that means 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. 2 times 2 is 4, then 4 times 2 equals 8. 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3, is going to be 27. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27. 4 cubed is going to equal 64. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 gives us 64. And then finally, the last perfect cube that I would ask that you memorize is 5 cubed. 5 cubed is going to equal 125. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. So memorizing these two lists, the first 15 perfect squares and the first 5 perfect cubes, will take us through our first goal, which is to quickly be able to recall the first 15 perfect squares, and the first five perfect cubes. Now for our second goal where we solve equations with exponents, we're going to look at problems that look like this. So in your book you might see 
uh, directions that say, not in your book, on, on your on my intro W, you might see problems that say, uh, solve the following equation for the variable, something like that. And so we might be given, for example, a problem that says x squared equals 64. And so when we were talking about square roots earlier, I made mention that a square and a square root are opposites of each other. And so when we're asked to square root a number, we need to ask ourselves what number or numbers can be multiplied by itself in order to equal the number. So, since a square root and a second power are opposites of each other, in order to get rid of the second power here, this 2 exponent, in order to get rid of that, I'm going to actually square root it. And by square rooting it, that's going to cause the second power and the square root to cancel. And so the only thing that will remain then on the left side of the equal sign is going to be x. But we all know that if we perform an operation on one side of the equal sign, we have to perform the same operation on the other side of the equal sign. So in the same way that I square rooted the left side, I'm also going to have to square root the right side. And so now we have to ask ourselves, what number or numbers can we multiply by itself to equal 64? So, we should know, based on the list that we made earlier, that the number that we want to multiply by itself to equal 64 would be 8. However, with these types of equations, there is another number that we can multiply by itself to equal 64. Think about what happens when you multiply a negative by a negative. Whenever you multiply a negative by a negative, you end up with a positive. So, if we were to take negative 8 and multiply it by itself, that would equal 64. Negative 8 times negative 8 is going to equal positive 64. So when we see equations like this, where we have x squared equals a number, we should end up with two answers, 8 or negative 8. And so the way that I have it written there is one way to express that answer, or we could also write x is equal to plus or minus 8. Either one of those answers are fine. In fact, in my HRW, there will be times where you have to enter your answer like what I have in red. There will be other times where you have to enter, enter your answer the way that I have it in purple. All right? So that's one example. Uh, let's take a look at another one. This one, we're going to be dealing with a fraction this time. So now we have x squared <coughs> equals 81 over 196. Same thing as before. In order to get rid of the square on, this, on the left side, we're going to have to square root that side. So the square root and the second power cancel. So we're just left with x on the left side. On the right side, what we want to do is we again want to square root. Now when I look at that, the square root of 81 over 196, to me, that looks very tricky. But what we're actually allowed to do is we're allowed to break our, our fraction up into two separate square roots. So instead of trying to take the square root of 81 over 196, we can break that up into the square root of 81 over the square root of 196. And those are numbers that we can much more easily take the square roots of. We should know, again, that the square root of 81 is 9. And while you're learning these, guys, it's totally fine to look back at your list that I had you write down earlier to help you identify what your perfect squares are. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of 196 is going to be 14. But we're not done. x is equal to 9 or 14. We should include the plus or minus sign in front of that. So x is equal to plus or minus 9 over 14. If you wanted to write that as x is equal to 9 over 14 or negative 9 over 14, I would be fine with that. It just all depends on the way that my HRW is expecting you to enter your answer. All right. One for you guys to work on on your own. Go ahead and pause the video and work through this one on your own. x squared equals 121. You work through this one, and then 
Once you're done, come back and I'll go through the work myself. So pause the video now. Alright, let's work through this one. What we're going to want to do again, square root, both sides. That causes the square root and the second power to cancel. So I get x equals the square root of 121, a number multiplied by itself to equal 121, would be 11. And we need to remember that that can be positive, oops, positive, let's just pretend like that's a plus sign, positive or negative. So our answer is x is equal to plus or minus 11. All right, another one for you to work on, x squared equals 9 over 49. Go ahead and pause the video now to work through that problem. To solve this one, we're going to square root the left side. That causes a square root and the second power to cancel, leaving us with x. And we're going to square root the right side as well. We're square rooting the right side because we had to square root the left side. <clears throat> so the square root of 9 over 49, we can break that apart into two separate square roots. Square root of 9 over square root of 49. When we take the square root of 9, we're going to get 3. Square root of 49 is going to be 7. And that can be either a positive or negative answer. So we have plus or minus 3 over 7. I hope that you guys were successful with those two examples. There's a couple more that I want to go over with you still. These ones dealing with cubes instead of squares. So again, a cube means that we're multiplying a number by itself three times to equal the number that we're trying to find. So for our first example, we have x cubed equals 27. In the same way as we used a square root before to get rid of a second power, we're going to use what's called a cube root. Okay, a cube root has a little 3, not out in front of the square root sign, but kind of inside that V area. So there, that indicates that it's a cube root, and so the cube root and the cube will cancel, so we get x equals, and if we cube root the left side, we have to cube root the right side as well. So we're trying to identify a number that we can multiply by itself three times to equal 27, and that's going to be 3. Now, it's an important distinction here that we do not use the plus or minus sign, because when you take a negative number and multiply it by itself three times, a negative times a negative times a negative. That's going to end up equaling a negative number again. Negative times negative is positive, but then when you multiply that positive by another negative, that's going to turn it negative again. So when we're dealing with cubes, we're not using the plus or minus sign anymore. All right, so let's look at one more. Here we have x cubed equals negative 125. Now, let me specify one thing before we look at this example. It is not okay to take the square root of a negative number. Let me just write this over here. Let's say we were asked to find the square root of negative 64. We cannot find that. You'll learn how to do that uh, your junior year, but right now, we're not learning how to do that. So if, you give, if you're given a problem like that, the answer for that is actually called the empty set. Okay. So we cannot take the square root of negative numbers, but we can take the cube root of negative numbers. Again, a negative times a negative times a negative will give us a negative. So if we go ahead, cube root this, cube root that, that will cause this to cancel. We get x equals, now the cube root, of negative 25. So a number that we multiply by itself three times equal negative 125. That would be negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 equals positive 25. But then that positive 25 multiplied by another negative 5 will equal negative 125. Alright, so if you guys have any questions, make sure that you're writing those down. We'll definitely spend some time practicing this just so that we're feeling comfortable before we go ahead with anything further. All right, hope that you guys have a good day. Again, make sure you write down any questions that you might have.